Hi and welcome back to the Kenny Dialogues podcast. Alexander Mar and Elie Vidin are glad to be back with you. Recently, it was the Apple Keynote event. During this one, we can learn about new products that uh, are launched by Apple and will be available soon in the market. Three major new products this year, a new iPad, a new Apple Watch and new iPhones, three in total. And uh, we'll be with you to discuss about these new products from an accessibility point of view. Also two new services, the Apple TV Plus as well as Apple Arcade. At the end of this show, we'll uh, focus on uh, new features regarding the accessibility that will be available soon with iOS 13. Enjoy! On September 10th, it was the uh, Apple uh, annual keynote. During this event, we can learn about the new devices that will be available in the market during the fall season. And uh, this year, a new couple of products were launched. And uh, so uh, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, as well as some uh, services. Be careful, by the way, that the keynote is not the event based on software new features like uh, iOS, macOS, tvOS. This one was the WWDC held in uh, June. But today, let's uh, focus on the keynote and let's discuss about products that were launched. So to discuss about this event, I am with Olivier. Hi, Olivier. Hi, how's it going? I'm doing well. And uh, you? Um. Okay. Uh, All started, and you know what happened this summer at my house, so big works there. So, well, after a flute, after uh, <laughs> after a couple of things, here the the new uh, semester, and here we go for a new podcast. Yeah. So, uh, let's move on, and maybe let's start. Let's talk about the. Um, the uh, new services that were launched, uh, uh, two new services, right? Yeah, two new services, Apple TV+, Plus, which, by the way, I'm not sure if it's entirely new or not, because they already talk about it. I-, I thought it was even launched. Well, uh, no, this is a new service. It is called the Apple TV+. Plus, uh, this one is uh, a, a service. It's uh, it's something comparable to Netflix. Uh, it's yeah. similar to Netflix, and they are launching some new series uh, on it. What was already existing is the TV service, which uh, provide a, a couple of uh, shows there. Okay, that's not the same thing. Nope, that's not. And so both of these will be available. Uh, for four ninety nine each. Yeah, four ninety nine uh, US each. Yeah, uh, for yeah, uh, US. Uh, for yes, uh, both services. But let's talk about the second one just before. Uh, Apple because, Arcades. This yeah. is basically a kind of Netflix where you can instead of being movies and TV shows, this is games. Yeah, so unlimited games. And uh, by the way, if you purchase a new device this year, I don't know when the uh, promo will hand exactly, but if you purchase a new uh, iPhone, iPad, uh, Apple TV, not sh- I'm not quite sure about the iP- the Apple Watch, but uh, for, for so. sure the uh, a Mac, yeah, a Mac, no, uh, not the Apple Watch, a Mac, yeah, uh, I was missing one. That's the uh, MacBook, uh, MacBook Pro, anyway. If you purchase one of them uh, you should uh, benefit of a free years of Apple TV plus and these two services uh, will be included uh, at no additional charge in the uh, family plan compared to Apple music uh, where you'll have to pay uh, I think it's five dollars an extra a month something like this uh, it's uh, 14.99 for family sharing and uh, uh, ten and nine ninety nine for individual, but in this, as you said, there's no individual and family. This there's only one price, so that's good. Yeah, only one price. Yeah, that's correct. That's right. So uh, and ju- you forgot to mention a thing, which is kind of a, a funny thing. I-, I did not watch the keynote, by the way. 
but you did a little bit. Yep. And can you tell us a bit about the TV show that Apple are creating? Yes, they are creating a show based on the blind or visually impaired person. So what, uh, let's see, uh, on how they are living uh, their life, uh, obstacle uh, they meet every day, etc. So yeah, um, it's uh, pretty interesting. So it's only in English, by the way, but uh, they should uh, launch uh, their first show uh, with will be on this topic. I think the services will be launched in November. Uh, something like so, so, yes, I think uh, not in September. I don't know the exact date, but uh, yep, maybe near November, something like this. Yes. Okay, so they started off the keynote with that. I yep, think. exactly. So these two services. And, uh, yep, after that, so let's talk about maybe the new devices that were presented during this uh, event. And after that, yeah. maybe we can talk a bit about the new accessibility features in iOS uh, 13. So yeah. maybe let's start with the uh, new iPad. They started with the iPad on the keynote. I think so, yes. But anyways. All right. So let's start with the brand new, exciting iPad 7th generation. This is so marvelous. Oh, I'm sure you want to get one right away, Alex. Oh, for sure. I can't wait no longer. Especially that you have a 6th gen, and so do I. But um, anyways, uh, we are uh, ironic, by the way, because... The iPad 7 is basically the iPad 6 with a bigger screen. Like it has, I think, 10.5 inch display against 9.7 inch for the iPad 6. And it has the same exact processor. So this is the A10 Fusion, the processor found uh no not the not the exact same processor than the iPhone 7 but it's an 8 and fusion the same exact processor found in the iPad 6th generation same storage capacities and i think this is around the same price and i think so yeah touch touch id on the iPad 6 is Touch ID second generation. So the Touch ID that came with the iPhone 6s, 7, and 8. And according to an article that I read on um, Apple News uh, I see, I think website, as well. On the iPad 7, and I'm not mixing things, on the iPad 7, so the new one, this is a Touch ID, according to what I read, first generation, same as the one found on the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6. So, yeah, and the uh, Touch ID first generation is very slow to react, so I don't know if the information is true. I really don't understand why they did that, but... Uh, don't forget that this iPad is entirely made of uh, recycled uh, stuff. So maybe they were having a couple of <laughs> extra uh, Touch ID first generation. So they, 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 they decided to, to use them. I don't know. but uh, I don't understand the interest of making this product because this is this. I know for visual, but this this kind of has the same specs and... I yeah, mean, same thing. Quite the same. Yeah, quite the same. So really, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand. But anyway, Ex- except for the bigger display, you were telling me uh, when we were outside of recording that people like uh, beautiful displays and big displays and. Yeah, and that's the reason why they've decided to enlarge the uh, uh, the iPhone. You know, uh, since a couple of years, what he, what, what we can hear uh, during the keynote is a better screen and a fantastic camera. Yeah. So, yep, this is it. But um, 
Anyways, uh, so uh, that's it for the iPad. Maybe let's talk a bit yeah. about the uh, new Apple Watch Series 5. Yeah. Um, so the Apple Watch Series 5 is available in 42 and 44 millimeters, starting at 529. 529 again, for the 42, right? Yeah. Um, and a GPS. Canadian again, dollars. Yes. Again, two models, so GPS and GPS plus cellular. It has the same design as last year, so not like the Apple Watch Series 3, but like the Apple Watch Series 4. I have seen it in Apple stores, but not that much, so I think the square, the edges are more rounded than square. I'm not too sure. That's quietly the but, same thing, really. To be honest, it's quietly the same thing. Like before on the Series 3, I think the, the corner were like squares. On the Series 4, I think this is round, right? Yeah, that's not exactly, but uh, yeah, they've changed a little bit the design. For the Series 5, it is the exact same design as for the Series 4. And so the changes for this year, correct me if I'm wrong because I did not watch it, but I think the feature that they made the more focus on is the always on screen feature. Yep. Basically what this is, according to what I understood, what this is is that even if you don't raise your wrist to see the time the time will always be there i mean for a sighted person i don't know how voiceover is going to behave with that yeah that's a good question well in fact yeah that's the case so um the the time will always be displayed on the screen and uh, probably just voiceover will ignore this out because uh to be honest uh not sure it will be really helpful for a voiceover user that the screen remain on all the time but for a sighted person or visually impaired person it's something probably nice to be able to see the time all the time without having to touch the screen or to press the digital crown or whatever Otherwise, we have a compass yes. now included, as well as a compass app, of course. Yeah, and but the compass will be mostly used uh, for uh, GPS purpose because when uh, walking on the sidewalk or something like this, you can just point your watch in the direction you will be uh, walking, uh, walking to know exactly uh the right there direction and make sure you're following right let's say the the gps and the compass so probably it will be accessible as well with the uh, voiceover and uh, what else now it will be also possible to call like uh, uh, emergency services uh, internationally internationally yeah if the watch is a uh, gps and cellular by pressing and holding the um uh, the, the, the side button. That's already the case in Canada, but I think in some other country, this is something that will be added. And we have a new upgrade in term of storage. So the, um, okay, let me do a bit of history here. The Apple Watch Series 3 version GPS is a 8 gig. 8 gigabytes storage. The cellular one, Series 3 cellular, 16 gigs. For the Series 4, both models, so cellular and GPS, are 16 gigs. This here, we will have 32 gigs of storage for both models. So that's something good. Because we didn't talk about it uh, last in the last month of June when the keynote was held. We didn't make a podcast on the WWDC. 
but with watchOS 6, the watch is getting more independent over the iPhone, so it will have its own app stores with its own apps, and I don't know until which point it will be so independent of the phone, so having more storage is what could make me upgrade and especially and I I, i'm considering i'm reading yeah and i hope uh, also that uh, it will be uh, possible as well to uh, listen to music without uh, having to to pair some headphones to the watch so uh, with a large storage capacity of 32 gigs i really hope so it will be possible but not maybe I for music so. but for podcasts and audiobooks it will be uh, very very helpful to be able to 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 uh, to listen to them directly uh, with the uh, watch internal speaker the Apple Watch Series 3 is still installed, by the way. How much? Uh, it's uh, 259 for the 38 millimeter uh, GPS. Yep. And um, uh, I think it's uh, something like $50 tr- an extra tr- for the... Uh... I think it's 389 yeah, yeah, but if just for the forty-two millimeters, I think it's uh, approximately fifty dollars okay. extra. Yeah, uh, but pro- yeah, yeah, for the for the cellular, that's something different. Usually, it's uh, um, around the one hundred dollars extra. So I think this is it for the uh, Apple Watch, and um, maybe let's start about le- let's start uh, talking about the uh, new uh, iPhone that were launched. So three new models. Yeah, and guess what the names are? iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. Yep. So, the iPhone 11 is basically the iPhone tenor, so it has the same screen size. Physically, I think it has a lot of similarities with the iPhone XR. So 6.1 inch display, Face ID, uh, it has an A13 Bionic, and the iPhone XR has an A12 Bionic. So an upgrade to the processor. Yeah, and by the way, the, um, the all have Face ID and the A13 this year. Maybe uh, maybe we can um, uh, give the price right here. I don't know what you think about it. Uh, yeah, I don't ha- uh, do you have them or... Um, yeah, sure. Uh, give me one uh, second. I know the 64 gigs is uh, 979 so $979. Oh. And there's a 128 and 256 also uh, yep. gigs. Yep, and the 128 gigs is uh, $1,049. All prices are in Canadian dollars, by the way. And the 256 gigs is uh, $1,189. Now let's talk about the iPhone Pro, iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max. So for the, uh, for both model, by the way, uh, three different capacities exist. The 64, 256 and 512 gigs. Here are the price for the iPhone 11 Pro. So for the 64 gigs, 1379. The, uh, 256 gigs. 256. Yep. Correct. It's uh, 1589 and 512. It is 1859. Now about the iPhone 11 Pro Max, 64 gigs, 1519, uh, 256 gigs, 1729. And for the 512 gigs, it is 1999. So near $2,000. Uh, by the way, iPhone XR and iPhone 8 are still available on the market. And uh, this is a um, good 
price, uh, especially for the iPhone 11, it's under $1,000. So if we compare to the iPhone launch last year, uh, as well as the iPhone X, this is not uh, so much expensive. And I think that's uh, something nice to know about. Yeah, but like, I think the iPhone 11 is not, I think it's not worth to update to an iPhone 11 if you already have an iPhone 10 R or no really yeah, R. yeah at this time really I have an iPhone 10 R and I was Me oh too. maybe I'll upgrade this year uh, even if I have a 10 R but uh listening to the keynote I was really disappointed nothing there Let's talk about the uh, features regarding uh the accessibility only two things. The Wait, you don't want to talk about the cameras? Oh, I'll talk a bit about it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit. Uh, I'll talk about it a bit later on. But just before, uh, let's focus on features for uh, blind users that uh, can be uh, interesting. Uh, the first one, yeah, for sure the A13 uh, processor. But again, uh, if you're not uh, playing uh, games with a lot of uh, visual effect inside of them or any, uh, let's say, a lot of uh, video into streaming. But again, that's not the processor. It, it, you like the processor if you want to take photos, like uh, work on a video, uh things like this but really for us that's not really important at this time maybe the XR no. will die before the other ones but anyway uh, so yeah uh, the processor uh, now uh, all three models integrate the uh, Dolby uh, digital uh, augmented reality audio so the Dolby is now uh, integrated I don't know if it will be great to watch movies and things like this, but this is, I think, the, the the main new features regarding the accessibility on these models. And, um, uh, yep. The, it um, means better sound, in other words. Yeah, yeah, correct, exactly. And the other one is the battery. The battery provide, um, a better capacity so uh, you may expect uh, depending the model uh, from uh, one hour uh, for the iPhone uh, 11 uh, an extra compared to the iPhone XR and for the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max it is between four and five hours compared to the iPhone XS, XS Max and XR. So uh, this is it regarding the battery and why between uh, four and five hours? It's only because like, uh, you know, the battery of the iPhone XS was a very low battery, not a lot capacitive. The XS Max was more capacitive in theory compared to the one uh, available with the iPhone XR, but uh, in reality, in practice it was a bit less and uh, in practice the battery of the iPhone XR uh, well uh, it, it was so good the battery in the iPhone XR is or was really impressive I agree it is a yeah. good battery yeah and the battery of the XR is much better compared to the one inside the XS so yep this is it. I don't know. Maybe if you'd like, I give a, maybe I can uh, give a, a couple of um, information uh, roughly about uh, all these uh, new models. Yeah. So maybe let's start with the iPhone 11. Uh, so uh, for sure, the A13. Uh, this is a liquid retina display. It is, um, uh, yeah, the Dolby. I, I've, I've talked about it. Next thing, you have two cameras, uh, two, ba two uh, back cameras. Uh, they are a 12 megapixel a wide camera and ultra wide. The front camera is a true depth 
with the 12 megapixel, it seems that Face ID is more reliable on these models. Now we have the possibility to uh, make uh, slow movies or uh, with the uh, front camera, the better battery. I talk about it. They were speaking about dark mode. I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, the dark mode, uh, yeah, for the iPhone uh, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max to take out uh, videos and photos uh, in the dark. But iOS 13 also integrate the dark mode. Uh, so just be careful yeah. about it. Okay. Uh, so six colors, yellow, red, purple, green, white, and black. That's all for the iPhone 11. Now let's talk about the iPhone Pro and Pro Max. So uh, two uh, dimension available. Uh, the first one for the iPhone 11, uh, 11 Pro, it is 5.8 inches. And the iPhone... Like the tennis. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. And the iPhone Pro Max, same thing as the XS Max. It is 6.5 inches. Uh, so the screen is uh, OLED uh, Super Retina uh, XDR. So better screen quality. The Dolby is still here for sure. Uh, three cameras on the back. All 12 megapixel, including the telephoto the uh, wide camera and the ultra wide camera the possibility to take uh, photos in uh, night mode uh, you have uh, like i said uh, better battery it is now possible to fast charge the device uh, for 30 minutes and you'll gain 50 percent more batteries these two iPhones are available in four colors. So the space green, uh, the silver, midnight green, pretty self-explanatory for someone who never saw colors, and the gold. And uh, that's it. Now, uh, Alex, uh, to conclude uh, this podcast, maybe we should take a time to talk about iOS, watchOS, iPadOS, and tvOS, maybe? Well, regarding tvOS, I did not uh, heard a lot of things regarding this uh, operating system. I think nothing very special, but um, maybe... Um, Multi-user support. Uh, yeah. I think that's uh, that's the thing, but uh, maybe let's focus on uh, accessibility. Uh, because uh, this is, uh, I think, what uh, mostly interests our listeners. And regarding the uh, general new features in the operating system, you can find them out uh, by uh, typing a Google search. So maybe let's focus on the accessibility before um, before anything. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, iOS and uh, iPadOS. And these are the operating system where we have a lot of changes regarding the accessibility this year. They separated uh, iOS, the iPhone and the iPad. So now they have two different operating systems, even though iPadOS is like iOS. Quite the same but thing. But they call it iPadOS. Yeah. yeah, but don't panic. That's quickly the same thing. For sure, you have uh, extra gestures in iPad compared to iPhone. Why they've changed the name? It is probably, I think, because they want that the iPad be uh, similar to what you can do with a computer. So it might be similar in the future to, a, let's say, a MacBook uh, Pro or MacBook Air. I think they want that the iPad uh, being the, uh, the the computer of the future. Just maybe before we uh, go ahead and talk about all the new features, maybe let's talk about uh, which devices are compatible. So uh, I have a, a yeah, complete so. list here. So okay. uh, maybe I can uh, uh, go ahead and uh, name all of them. So uh, let's see if I remember all of them. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, so, um, okay. let's, uh, start maybe by, uh, uh, 
uh, the most recent iPhone. Uh, we, we'll talk about iPad later on, but let's talk about the most recent iPhone and let's go down. Of course, there is the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro. And the um, Pro Max? Slash, uh, Pro Max, yes. Yes. Tennis, Tennis Max 10R. Yep. 10. Uh-huh. 8 plus 8, 7 plus 7, 6S, 6S plus. And the iPod Touch 7th generation. So the uh, iPhone uh, you, 5S. You, you, you missed one. You missed oh, one. Oh, the iPhone SE. Yeah, iPhone the SE. SE. The SE. SE. Uh, yes, and, uh, yeah, the iPhone 5S so and the 6. are dead. Yep. Over. And so is 3D Touch. Yeah, uh, yeah, a 3D uh, Touch, by the way, is uh, officially uh, dead, by the way. Yeah, uh, you're right, because, um, uh, yeah, they've removed 3D Touch on all uh, new iPhone this year. So, uh, that's it. And uh, maybe now let's talk about what will be supported by iPadOS, which devices are supported uh so uh do you want to go ahead or i have the list right here i can i, I can try oh i have many I, uh, I have really okay. many ipad pro so maybe i think it's going to okay. be better if i yeah. um yeah. go down okay so yeah. uh the ipad pro 12.9 inches the ipad pro 11 inches the ipad pro 10.5 inches the ipad pro 9.7 inches the ipad uh seventh generation so the new one the ipad 6th generation the ipad 5th uh, uh, generation ipad mini 5th generation this is a recent one ipad mini 4 uh yep ipad mini 4 uh ipad air 3rd generation and finally the ipad air 2 so uh, this is it. Now let's talk about the accessibility. One of the main feature I was really interested by is, but this is not something that uh, impact directly uh, users using voiceover, but this is really, 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 really interesting. This is the voice control. And the voice control allows to uh, control your iPhone, your iPad by um, seeing some voice commands and it's working well. It's only in English, by the way, for now. Uh, I got, unfortunately, a couple of glitch using these features as well as voiceover at the same time, but I know they will fix this out probably soon. And I know We're that- We're still in beta. Yeah, yeah, we're still in beta. Yeah. Uh, at the time of the recording, I'm running under iOS 13.1 beta 3. And, um, I know they'll fix this out for voiceover users. Why? Because they've integrated some specific command to control voiceover. So let's say you have a command. It is called voiceover activate. And you can name an item. So let's say voiceover activate settings. Or you have voiceover select settings. So these two commands will allow us to put uh, the, the first one will uh, click the item. The, the second one will just place the focus on the item. So that's uh, really interesting. Uh, what about uh, some other great features into voiceover? Yeah, so a feature that I really am l really looking forward to is called, uh, well, you can have many different Braille tables now, uh, different languages. Yep. So for the example, my first language is French. So even if I switch my phone in English, I can have my French Braille table. So pretty nice feature that I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to have on my phone. Uh, Otherwise, uh, another new feature. Ju ju just yeah. before we skip to the next one, uh, into Braille tables, uh, we can uh, now select uh, between uh, iOS built-in Braille tables, so the Braille tables made by Apple, or uh, LibLui is also available, just saying. Oh, yeah. Since yep. when? I didn't see it uh, on... Uh, uh, since uh, at on least a week. Since at least a week. Oh. Um, but, I'll have yep. to check that out. 
Uh, yeah. uh, wait, maybe this is only on 13.1. Uh, maybe, but uh, this is... Uh, uh, no, 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 not uh, only in 13.1 because it was uh, there this summer. Uh, but this is a hidden feature, so uh, uh, I, I, I can show you later on. You'll have to go into settings under accessibility, voiceover, braille, okay. under braille table. And then for each language, you can add some braille tables and even add some languages. And then you'll have the choice to select yeah. Libri. So, yep. Uh, it's there. Yeah, because just so you know, we both have the betas on our iPad 6, but we don't have it on our main phones. So that's why we made some tests this summer. We played with it. Yeah, so, and yeah. Uh, also I've installed the beta on an old iPhone as well. So, uh, yep. But uh, no, not on my uh, main devices because it's uh, too dangerous. And for sure, not on the Apple Watch because there is absolutely no way to downgrade if something went wrong. So, uh, yep. yep. Okay, uh, next feature? Um, next feature, yeah, activities. Oh. So, um, yeah. So now, let's say your favorite, let's say your default voice is Ava, and for some reason, when you are reading the news, you won't, you would like Alex to read the news for you because you like when he breathes and all this stuff. Well, now in iOS 13 and iPadOS, you can set this. You were comparing this like with JAWS, like uh, GCF files or G... Yeah, like GCF. Uh, uh, JCF, sorry, JCF. Uh, JCF files. Uh, yes, it is comparable to all uh, settings you may uh, do in an application by using the uh, setting centers into JAWS and same thing for the voice profile, but uh, be aware that this... Uh, an activity is not only uh, allowing to change some settings related to the voice. Uh, you no, can no, no. E even, I think, Braille. select the Braille tables or even change the way um, tips are announced. Uh, you can change this. Um, what else? I think you have a couple. And... Um, it's not only for applications because you can uh, also um, ask VoiceOver if I'm, let's say, uh, using a social networking, do this. If I'm editing some text, do this, whatever the application. And uh, you know uh, what can be very helpful. Uh, I'm using a lot of French applications as well as, uh, as well as a lot of English ones. So what can be really, really, really helpful? Uh, I can yeah. select a specific voice for uh, my English application and a different one for French apps. So as soon as I'll open uh, a French or uh, an English application, if my main uh, voice is a French one, it will automatically switch. Which so um, that's nice, and if it is not performing what you'd like, you can also uh, select manually the activity by uh, using the rotor. So let's say that uh, well you want to use uh, let's say the seeing AI, seeing AI act, uh, activity you 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 set up for this app, and let's say Facebook for uh, I don't know a couple of minutes, you can do it. So that's uh, nice. Uh, what else? Uh, gestures and keyboard shortcut that you can change. So yeah, so like you can do with uh, Braille Display, they introduced this in iOS 11 where you can reassign certain commands. Now they, they have extended this to gestures as well as keyboard shortcuts. Yep, and new gestures are also available. Um, so yes, you can, uh, do this. You can also, uh, turn off some, uh, sound events. I'm not sure you can uh, change, uh, these sounds, but, uh, you can for sure select which sound you'd like to hear, which one you don't want. 
and also a voiceover will add some acti haptic feedback and extra for devices who can vibrate and provide haptic feedback. So uh, this is it. What else? The slide to type features. What is that? So I think that it um, is that you don't have to lift your fingers to type a word. So for example, if you type hello, you place your finger on the H and then you you hear a sound and you don't lift. You go where you think the E is and then you come back to L and then you, you lift your finger. But I was not really able to test it on the iPad. I don't know. Uh, but I know you did test it. Yep, uh, that's how I tested it um, yesterday. No, I, I did not test it on the iPad, sorry. I, I, I tested it uh, with an iPhone uh, success. Success. Yeah, and uh, with the iPhone 6s, it was really uh, impressive. Like, uh, it was uh, really great. I tested it out in English. I did not test it yet in French. It seems that it is available. Unfortunately, on my iPad, I was unable to uh, use it. I don't know why, but uh, my iPad was not up to date. So, but uh, now I uh, update it. Um, but yep, uh, it's working. Uh, th this is really interesting. So you just slide your finger, you point let's say but without raising it you just go where you think the letter is located on the keyboard so make sure you well know your keyboard and uh it is suggesting you some stuff and the word can be written by itself yep it increased the way i was uh the, the speed uh i i was uh, typing but not as much as using the braille screen input and for those who are not using this feature, you are missing something, guys. Because this is... Yeah, a I really cannot good. live without it. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Braille screen input is just so fantastic. A must-have. Oh, for sure. Yes. And uh, even if some applications are... Not, not, the, not the entire system, but some uh, third-party apps are more... Sometimes more accessible on Android... I got a couple of them like this, not all of them, but uh, some time on Android. I, I don't know, but some controls are um, labeled better and uh, yeah, it happened. And uh, well, um, uh, yes, really, uh, you know, uh, I'm just missing uh, the Braille screen input on Android and uh, having the Braille screen input available on Android but integrated in the system not as a third-party app I will greatly uh, consider <laughs> Android more not more than iOS but I'll, I'll, I'll consider Android maybe more on a, on a daily basis but for sure I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll keep Android both platforms good. Yeah, I'll just keep both platforms but anyway uh, this yeah. is not the topic uh, so, uh, well, I think, uh, this is what, uh, covered the most, uh, major change regarding the accessibility. Uh, yeah, just, um, oh yeah, for the, uh, US English only, the Siri, they changed the Siri voices, they made them sound more human. And for the U.S. English female only, it is possible to use it with voiceover, the new Siri voice. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and check this out. I was unable yeah, to... Uh, yeah. Were you able to listen to them? They made a podcast on... Uh, Apple this? Apple this, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, uh, maybe I'll try to to switch to uh, U.S. English just to listen to uh, uh, these voices. Great, thanks for the information. Um, what else? Uh, I think this is it. Uh, the release date. So oh, yeah. iOS thirteen will be released. Be be careful. It will not be released at the same time. 
so please pay attention. iOS 13 will be released for the iPhones on Thursday, September 19th. For the iPod, I don't know when it's going to be released. For the iPad, and there's going, there's going to be another update to iOS being 13.1, which is going to be released September 30. And iPad OS 13, I guess it will be 13.1 at this point, will also be released on September 30. As for watch OS, Watch OS 6 will be released for the Apple Watch Series 3 and Series 4 Thursday, uh, the uh, September, not December, September 19th. And it will be released later this fall for Series 1 and 2. And please, if you have an Apple Watch, do update your iPhone to iOS 13 before updating to WatchOS 6, which will bring more independence to the phone. I don't know if we talked about it or not. Yes. But but yes, make sure that uh, you upgrade the, the, the phone before or it's not going to work. I hope the podcast uh, will be online before September 19th. Uh, by the way, uh, just before updating to iOS, I'll greatly suggest you maybe to wait until iOS 13.1 being released because uh, this should correct a couple of bugs and uh, this uh, version and uh, regarding bugs with voiceover at this point I think one of the major one is the fact that you have no possibility to uh, navigate by line uh, using the router when editing an email and the fact that when typing in Braille in the mail app or note app after a couple of sentences it seems that the Braille display will freeze. Also yeah. I don't know if it does that in messages. I will, I won't have to test. Uh, mail and notes were explicitly tags. So I don't yeah. know, but, uh, yes, we'll have maybe to, to do some tests. Yeah. I think I'll wait 13.1. I think so as well. And, uh, uh, uh on main devices. And, um, yes. also, uh, for low vision users or using, um, uh, invert polarity. Uh, so uh, a black text on a white screen or a white text on a black screen. Well, it appears that uh, the device will change uh, randomly polarity with iOS 13. So uh, really be careful about this one. And uh, please uh, maybe wait uh, a couple of extra days before updating if you're using this feature. Otherwise, it might be very, very, very disturbing. Yeah. yeah, and if you want a complete list of uh, bugs that are known, we we took that information from the Apple Viz website. Yeah, and they are doing a great post, so I'll greatly invite you to to check uh, their uh, uh, post about uh, known issues in iOS 13. Yes, and uh, just before ending this podcast, will you change your iPhone this year? My iPhone? No. My Apple Watch? Maybe. Because I have a Series 3. I don't know how WatchOS is going to run. So I will see. What about you? I'm quite not sure about the Apple Watch. Maybe yes, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, regarding the iPhone, uh, for sure, uh, not this year. Uh, really, I've got the iPhone XR uh, this summer. And I know that... Uh, there's nothing for us regarding the accessibility in the new models yeah. except for the Dolby. But to be honest, uh, and maybe better speakers that don't yeah. take dust. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, crappy speakers. Anyways, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. I, 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 speakers. It's, it's in, a joke between us. Yeah. Anyways, uh, well, um, we're uh, we got a, a couple of issues with the uh, earpiece and uh, iPhone 10R as well as iPhone 8, and uh, oh, crap. 
Anyways, um, yeah, but uh, regarding the iPhone XR, uh, you know, well, compared to other models, maybe the only thing I can uh, grab is a better battery with the iPhone X, yeah. uh, no, not 10, sorry, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, but you are really willing to pay this uh this uh price for just a battery and by the way the battery in the no. iPhone 10R is r- is uh very very really good. very good yep it's really good yes. but uh well there's nothing there no, this, this, this is not worth this this the, there's no reason at least for for us to have a 10R if you have other if you have, let's say, an iPhone 8 or yeah. iPhone 7, it, it oh, would yeah, be yeah. worth it. But for us, who have a 10R. I mean, mine, uh, I, I I had to have it replaced. It, it's more than three months now, and the battery is still at 100% capacity. It has a pretty good battery. I don't have to complain. Very good speaker. And yeah. I don't see what I would change. Uh, you're not going to be able to send me some selfie. I'm so sad. <laughs> I can't see your, I can't see and you, and so and you can't either. Mm, yeah, no, I can't. But uh, anyway, you know, like a better camera, better screen. Uh, well, you know, uh, the processor, but again, like, uh, really, mm. I, I think I'll, I'll skip this here, but... Oh, but, Alex, the system is optimized for faster. Like, somebody was telling me that it was faster on DSC than iOS 12. So maybe in, th- in kind of software, they will be able to make it faster or... Yeah, you mean on the uh, iPhone 11? Uh, 10R. Oh, uh, yeah, the 10R. Uh, yeah, 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 it should be, uh, it, it should be okay. Yeah, really, the, the 10R well, was yeah. launched last year, so, uh, uh, I, I'm not worried about it. To be honest, I'm not worried. No, me neither. No, so, and, uh, you know, uh, I heard that, oh, you, you, you purchased an iPhone this year, you're crazy, uh, uh, really, uh, that was, a uh, that was a really bad move. Really? <laughs> Well, uh, well, I'll get an extra. <laughs> Quietly, nothing, to be honest. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I, I think I'll have to send a couple of selfies, but, uh, uh, really, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of selfies. Anyways. I think the iPhone Tanner makes good selfies anyway. I, to be honest, if I want to sell a selfie to a blind person, uh, well, I think the, even the, the camera and the iPhone 5S will be enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, maybe like the camera will be better on the iPhone Pro or Pro Max for, uh, let's say stuff like Be My Eyes or even Hair Up. Again, um, uh, be my eyes, they are Apple not. Apple have to release the API. Yeah, exactly. And for that, to, to be honest, this is not uh, something that will be uh, available tomorrow. So, uh, I I have time. Really, I I have the time, and I'm even not sure like that a volunteer on Be My Eyes will be able to uh, benefit of all these modes with the camera. Wow, no, really. No, 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 no. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yep. Okay, so I uh, hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And uh, for sure, if you have some questions, comments, or any feedback to provide, don't hesitate to uh, give us don't a buzz uh, us. by phone, email, yeah. social networks. You'll find all the information in a couple of seconds. And um, uh, we'll talk to you in the uh, next episode yeah. of our podcast. Thanks. And bye for now. Thanks. Bye. Before the end of this podcast, I would like to say you thank you for your loyalty to this series of podcasts on assistive technologies. I would also like to thank our loyal collaborator. As a reminder, I would like to inform you that Canadialog will not provide free technical support on product presented during these shows and that are not sold directly by Kenny Dialog. Please note that our podcasts are now available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, as well as on Victor devices by consulting the North American English suggested podcast list from Humanware. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, 
You can contact us via email at podcastwitness at kennydialogue.com. That is P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S at C-A-N-A-D-I-A-L-O-G dot com. Or by phone on our toll-free number at 1-888-730-0003. Again, 1-888-730-0003 extension 555 extension 555 i also invite you to visit our website which contains a lot of useful information at www.kennydialogue.com you can also visit us on facebook twitter and youtube thanks for listening